Guys, good morning here. Dealing with quotation marks Monday, March 1st. Uh, this is still on page 194 and 195. The reason I say still is because this is how we ended last week. And yes, this is a bit of review. You're going to see some of the same slides. We're also going to add some information. But since we had a whole weekend in between, I want to make sure we review these quotation marks. Uh, and I, yeah, I know these are quotation marks, but you also can't forget the comma that comes with the quotation marks. And you're going to notice that common theme throughout this week that we're going to be dealing a lot with commas. Today is commas and question marks. So when we go through this again, if you ever see somebody do this when they're talking, that means they're quoting somebody. That's what a quotation mark does. It literally quotes other people's words. And what does that mean? That you are telling somebody what somebody else said. If you would quote to be or not to be. Now, those are Shakespeare's words. So then you'd say to be or not to be. Because you're quoting Shakespeare. He's the one that said that. Now, you don't have to be doing that for every last thing that you say that other people do. But in writing... That's how you set it off. Again, we talked about this last week, and you're going to understand that through all this week, dealing with commas and such, that when you're seeing a movie, they don't need to have quotation marks floating around because you can see who's talking. You can understand if it's Spider-Man talking or Green Goblin talking. You don't need quotation marks. When you're writing, you do. And notice the quotation marks surround exactly what somebody says or someone's words. Do you like this book? Ask the teacher. And notice a couple of things. Number one, you always capitalize the first word in the quote, even, of course, if it's the first word of the sentence. But notice you have a question mark to end it, and then you just start with the lowercase because, now this is going to sound weird, you're still continuing that sentence right? Oops, sorry. Do you like this book? Asked the teacher. That's a full sentence why the period is here. But did you like this book is the question that the teacher asked. So that's why you end that quote with the question mark. Now we're going to have a slide here coming up that quotation marks can also be at the end. Like here, Tim replied, it was the best book ever. Now notice the quotation marks go right around exactly what Tim said. Tim didn't say, Tim replied. He didn't say that. You don't need to put quotation marks around there. Notice that it ends with the correct punctuation because it also ends the sentence. Also see how it starts with a capital letter in the quotes. And here's the thing we're going to be talking about a lot this week. This comma comes right before the quote. Notice you didn't need a comma here because the quote was first. But the quote was last. Then you got to have a comma in there, and that just simply shows when somebody's reading, hey, get ready for a quote coming up. I know the quotation marks give it off as well, but that comma also helps. Again, don't forget, you're going to have the uh, quotes at the beginning, at the end, or they can even be split up. Notice the commas here as we go along. Here again... We had the quotation marks just under what Alex said. I want to push the copying, shopping cart, Alex said. You have the quotation marks surrounding it and the comma that shows it's the end of the quotations. Additionally, take a look here. Did the student just ask, comma, may I get a drink? There you can see the comma ending it here. The reason you don't have a comma here is because, as you can notice, it ends with the question or the exclamation point. Then you don't need an extra comma in there. Um, but if there wasn't an exclamation point or a, or a question mark, then you do need the comma. That's the difference. So notice when you see this, ask the student, that means it's a question. May I get a drink now? Question mark. Have the quotation marks around what the person said. And say, here, look, this verb can help you. Yelled. That shows emotion. Then you need an exclamation point, right? We finally won the game. Notice the quotes are just around that. 
exclamation point for that phrase, and then and the sentence yelled the picture, period. Here again, you need the comma to separate the, the normal sentence with the quote. This is what you guys are doing. Here you can see a picture of Kate, Sherman, and Ben at the first club meeting, okay? You need to show that you understand this correctly. Now, in my opinion, they're making this rather simple. I would strongly suggest you do th something first, and that is add a comma to each of the end of these that begin, uh, begin the sentence. Kate asked, comma. Now, you need to make up a sentence. Don't forget to have the quotation marks. Kate asked, notice asked, that's going to show you the question. Uh, here's Kate. Kate asked, hey, what a nice dog. That's all in quotation marks. Or I should say, what is the dog's name? That actually asks a question, huh? Question mark, quota quotation marks. Sherman answered, his name is Buddy. You know, whatever. The point is, you guys got to make up this dialogue or talking back and forth, showing that you didn't have quotation marks right around only what they say. And then don't forget, you do need a comma separating Kate Ass and no quotation. That's your assignment to wrap up quotation marks today, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Fill in all these lines with the dialogue or the talking back and forth between these three uh, people in their club. Lord's blessing to you, praise the Savior.